After Apollo 12, the agency is preparing for eight more lunar landings. They want to push further on the moon with improved spacesuits and new lunar rovers. But space enthusiasm is waning as mass protests and social change divide America. Although there was a lot of interest in, in 11, and there was still quite a lot of interest in Apollo 12, there were so many other major, major issues people were grappling with at that time. Issues like civil rights, the economy, and the Vietnam War. The president questions Apollo's worth, just as NASA unveils bold long-term plans. The agency pushes for reusable spaceships and space stations. Some even dream of space colonies. But the president is not on board. NASA comes up with a very ambitious plan that they lay out, and the Nixon administration uh, does not respond to that plan. They basically just sort of ignore it. After Apollo 12's lightning strike, NASA launches in pure sunshine. The skies are clear, but the crowds are thin. All 13 is go. Three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have lift off at 213. Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust, and it has cleared the tower. Two days later, Marilyn Lovell and Mary Hayes visit Mission Control to watch their husband's TV broadcast. The astronauts give a tour of the command module, Odyssey. There he is, we see him. And the lunar module, Aquarius. But none of the networks carry it. With Apollo 13, a lot of the interest, at least within the United States, had started to wane a bit. People weren't following the flight. There was a broadcast, but it didn't show on primetime TV. Roger, sounds good, and this is the crew of Apollo 13. Wish everybody there a nice evening, and uh, 